Man, it's one thing after another. Welcome back to Street Scores. It's your boy Rico giving y'all that 2018 special edition of Redskins Report. As many of y'all may know, a certain safety was recently arrested. I have a lot of the background details to give y'all as usual. If you haven't subscribed and dropped a like yet, please do so now. It helps a lot, goes a long way. Let's get it. The 2017 fourth round pick out of Michigan State, Monte Nicholson, was arrested early this morning along with a female companion named Sydney Maggiore in Loudoun County, Virginia, just minutes away from the Redskins training facility. Police were called to the retail and residential development named One Loudon at around 2 a.m. to break up a fight. But let me break down the general details of the fight. Monte Nicholson and Old Girl were out having drinks on a Monday night in Loudoun County. At some point, Monte and old girl Sydney drove up next to the victim's vehicle and began honking their horn at the victims. This led to a verbal altercation and then turned into physical violence. So logically, at some point, both groups must have pulled over and got out of their vehicles. We don't have the details on why Monte and Sydney were so hostile towards the victims from the beginning. We do not know the catalyst for Monte and Sydney pulling up next to the victim. Maybe something petty like them getting cut off or not letting them over. Maybe something happened before either couple got into their vehicles. Maybe something in one Loudon, and then the disrespect was amplified by the liquor in their system. I don't know. I'm just guessing on those details. But never mind that. Back to the facts from the report. Monte and Sydney assaulted the other couple. Monte assaulted the man. Sydney assaulted both the man and the woman and may have used a bottle as a weapon to strike the female victim. Monte was charged with assault and battery and public drunkenness. He was released on a 2,500 bail. Sydney was charged with malicious wounding and assault and battery. She was not granted bail and is still being held. The Redskins spokesman, Tony Wiley, had this to say about the incident. Quote, we are aware of the arrest of Monte Nicholson. We are gathering more information and will not comment until we have further details." Unquote. The victims were treated at a local hospital for their serious injuries that were fortunately not considered life-threatening. Now for the interesting behind the scenes details. The Redskins are fresh off of a big win that they were underdogs in and the win kept their playoff hopes alive and there's this new quarterback named Josh Johnson that has an infectious energy and positivity and also brings hope to the Redskins organization. Monte and Sydney could have been out drinking to celebrate or something. Or he could have been out drinking out of frustration after losing his starting role to HaHa ha Clinton Dix, who was traded to the Redskins after week 7 for a fourth round pick. HaHa ha started immediately after the trade and has not lost his starting role since. Monte Nicholson has only played in 22 snaps since Ha Ha was traded for. Monte went from being considered as important on defense as Jordan Reed is to our offense, as said by Jay Gruden, and also agreed upon by many fans and coaches in the organization, to only playing 22 snaps in seven games, with no injury worth noting. And the Redskins defense has been significantly worse since Ha Ha started. I know Monte has noticed. And I'm not saying it's Ha Ha's fault that the defense has been significantly worse. It's not all of his fault, but he does play a major role in the Redskins' defensive decline. Along with tragic inside linebacker play, inconsistent cornerback play, and an offense that can't stay on the field long enough to keep his defense fresh, there's many factors. And that last one, I believe, is the biggest factor. That is the biggest role in why the Redskins defense has significantly declined since the ha-ha trade. Any and every defense turns trash once they are tired, winded, fatigued, and mentally destroyed because they do everything in their power to stop the opposing offense and then their offense just goes three and out immediately and the defense is expected to go right back out there and do it again and again and again. Never getting the chance to actually relax and catch their breath. But back to the Ha Ha and Monte Nicholson situation. Because this could have played a major part in this whole violent situation. With Ha Ha playing poorly every game, he started until he went against the worst offense in the league, the Jaguars. Monte probably does feel some type of way. And I'm sure he's saying to himself, I could have done that too against the Jaguars. If not better. 
he's also got to feel some type of way about the fact that he was showing so much promise last year in his rookie season. I'm talking about Monte. But injuries derailed his very underrated season. He wasn't able to be there every game. Bleacher Report even noticed how great he was playing when he was healthy enough to play. So to go from that to not starting and the person starting over you is messing up in ways that you feel you wouldn't, like being out of place, missing assignments, taking bad pursuit angles, and being slow, that's gotta have you in your feelings, at least a little bit. I'm hoping he takes that energy and shows out when his number is called, and to make myself clear, I'm not saying that either of these two reasons definitely led to this assault and arrest, but I'm just throwing all of that out there so we can think of the situation around this mess. I like to call myself Sherlock Homeless because on an amateur scale, I always try to look at all the details, possibilities, and conspiracies around any given topic. And I'm just laying everything out there for y'all to form an opinion and story until we get all of the full details and some confessions from Monte Nicholson, which we will probably never get. We are more than likely just going to get some form of a public apology to the victims and the team and the Redskins organization. But one thing that people probably noticed but didn't talk much about is thank goodness Monte did not assault the woman victim. To be honest, it feels weird to say victim because with the broad details we have, it really just sounds like a fight and they lost. But I don't want to jump to conclusions. Maybe the victims were not ready to fight and really actually weren't fighting back. So I'm going to just continue to call them victims until we get further details into the case. But back to the topic at hand, if Monte would have assaulted the women victim, this news story would have been far more notorious than it is now. Right now, anybody a fan of a team other than the Redskins probably saw the tweet, article, or app notification of Monte getting arrested. And if they didn't react by saying who, who is Monte Nicholson? And just not care, they more than likely still don't care. This story is not huge outside of the Redskins nation. Won't be talked about on first take unless they use it to debate about the overall drama surrounding this organization. But if he would have laid hands on that woman victim or struck her in any way, this incident would have been huge. First of all, I would feel for the woman victim because violence against women is unacceptable. And the Redskins will get swarmed in controversy, drama, and distractions during this playoff run and that would not be fair to the players coaches and staff members out there working their tails off to get this team to the playoffs. it wouldn't be fair to josh johnson whose great story would get clouded over and forgotten behind monte's hypothetical violence towards women case josh johnson was just at home in oakland chilling hoping for another nfl opportunity and in his first nfl start since 2011 leads the Redskins, who look like they have no hope, down 13-6 in the fourth quarter against a great Jaguars defense in Jacksonville. And mind you, Josh Johnson is playing with a lot of backups and banged up players, and he led them to a comeback victory by three. He led a game-tying touchdown drive and a game-winning field goal drive, both filled with many third-down situations, with a few of them being third and longs. He barely practiced, he had to learn the receivers' names on Madden, let alone build chemistry with them, build chemistry with the offensive line with snap counts and cadences, and learning the actual playbook. All kinds of factors that went against him winning this game. And he overcame all of that. And if Monte would have assaulted the women, Josh Johnson's story would have just been swept under the rug, along with the fact that the Redskins could still make it into the playoffs with his fourth starting quarterback of the season, despite leading the NFL in injury. Monte would have just farted on all of that. So even though this assault and drunk in public situation is stupid and not worth it, at the very least, the silver lining in this is, he did not assault the woman victim. He also did not use any type of object or weapon according to the reports. His woman friend Sydney did, but Monte did not. Also, the victims were seriously hurt, but not to the point that it was life-threatening for either of the victims. If they were hurt any worse, this situation would have been a completely different monster. But now I want to know, what do y'all feel his punishment should be? Fine? Suspended? Honestly? Even though I don't drink at all, so I don't understand the point of drinking to the point that you can't control yourself at all, and I find it completely unacceptable and inexcusable, especially when you have that much to lose and so little to gain from it, 
But even then, I still don't feel like he should receive any severe punishment from the league or the Redskins. Maybe something small in-house from the Redskins, but with the victim's injuries not being life-threatening, I don't believe in some big fine or any type of suspension. Plus, he didn't do most of the damage as reported. I don't believe he has a track record of doing this also. This was probably just a mistake and he would probably never do it again after this. While he was sitting with them folks, sitting at that police station, I'm almost sure he was like, man, I'm tripping. I'm never putting myself in this situation again. All this money and NFL future I have on the line and I'm out here drunk fighting and for what? Something petty? So I'm sure he's learned his lesson. Plus the two hypothetical reasons I gave y'all might have led to the situation. So I kind of feel for him. But that's it for this episode. Thanks for the view. What do y'all think? I want to hear y'all opinions. And it looked like Monte does too from the picture on the screen. <laughs> but that's what this video is for. I want to know your opinion on this situation. Do you feel he deserves some major punishment? Do you feel he should be made an example of with all of the controversy and drama that is already surrounding the Redskins team and organization? Or are you more of a zero tolerance type? But while y'all at it, make sure y'all dolomite fake punch that like button, favorite subscribe, I'll subscribe back, and most importantly, comment and share. And again, thank y'all for the support. I'll catch y'all later. I'm gonna keep bringing y'all some more heat while it's cold outside. I'm out.